There are women of great wealth and power whose influence is important and notable for future generations. And there are ordinary women whose stories are no less significant. As Ruby Daniel wrote, it is important for people today to know what happened before they were born, to know about the lives of ordinary women. Wildflowers who bloom in the forest. Nobody sees them and they fade. And it is remarkable how through her extraordinary work, Ruby Daniel was able to bring to life ordinary women before they would fade. So who was Ruby? Ruby Daniel was born on the first day of Hanukkah, 1912, in Cochin, a city in Kerala state on the southwest coast of India. Her family lived in Jewtown, a neighborhood with three synagogues located on an island across the harbor from five other synagogues on the mainland. The name of the neighborhood may hint to a separation in society, but in fact, Jews and Cochin got along well with their Hindu, Muslim, and Christian neighbors. They all spoke Malayalam, the language of Kerala and language of instruction at government elementary schools. After all, the establishment of the Jewish community there dates back hundreds of years. Ruby and her younger brother and sister lived in Jewtown with their parents and grandparents in a small 300-year-old house with a veranda where many of the family activities took place. Ruby's father, Eliyahu Chai Daniel, was a ticket salesman for the ferry boat that crossed the harbor, and her mother Leah took over the job after his death. Ruby's grandfather, Eliyahu Japheth, was the shochet who prepared kosher meat for the community. He was also very learned in Jewish texts. That may be why Ruby was such a good student, both at the local government school and at her Jewish school, or the Cheder. You see, Jewish children learned Hebrew in the Cheder so that they would be able to follow the prayers and Torah readings in the synagogue. Ruby also learned English from her mother at a young age and continued to excel throughout her studies. After elementary school, her mother wanted her to continue her education by studying in English at St. Teresa's, a respected Catholic school across the harbor in the city of Ernaculum. Although Ruby's grandfather was against the idea, due to the distance she would have to travel by boat every day to get there, her mother insisted. She even pawned a gold necklace to be able to afford to send Ruby there. And then, when she completed high school, her grandfather was so proud of her high marks and completion of her studies that he bought Ruby a gold chain. She went on to study at St. Teresa's University, but after a year her father and grandfather both died, so she had to work instead and help the family financially. Ruby served as a clerk in the High Court, District Court, and Munsif Court for 15 years. And during World War II, she became the first Jewish woman to serve in the Indian Navy but it was her grandmother, Docho, who instilled in Ruby her great passion for storytelling and Malayalam Jewish songs. You see, Docho was a local expert in these songs and taught them to other women. Although women sang in Hebrew as well, they were the main keepers of Malayalam Jewish folk songs. They would write them down in notebooks and perform them at social gatherings, especially for Jewish holidays and wedding parties. Later in life, Ruby set in motion extensive work in translating and analyzing Malayalam Jewish songs. Ruby herself translated over 120 of these songs, and the project continues today. If not for her efforts, the songs might have been lost when the community left Cochin to move to Israel. She documented a handful of these songs in her book and articles. Like this blessing song, sung at many occasions, especially at a brit milah, or circumcision, at a pidyon haben, ritual for redeeming a firstborn son, or for a bride. The song refers specifically to childbirth, and it echoes a number of the morning blessings in the Hebrew liturgy. But while preserving these songs greatly connects us to the ancient Jewish community of Cochin, Ruby's personal story reveals much about the community's practices. Ruby recalled the holiday of Shemini Atzeret, celebrated in the synagogue. Her grandfather, not only the town shochet, but also a self-educated scholar, was called up during these services. As part of this holiday, he would wear a kappa, or a white garment that the family sewed for him. And Ruby also recalls times when her grandfather would sit with the family at home on Shabbat and festivals and would sing the prayers. Some neighborhood children would join, many later revealing that they essentially learned all the holiday tunes from Ruby's house. But as much as Ruby enjoyed her life in Jewtown, a place where she and the community felt safe despite their minority status, with the establishment of the State of Israel, she made her way to the Holy Land. And Ruby wasn't the only one. 
Nearly the entire Cochin Jewish community came to Israel, not because they were forced to, and not because they had anything to fear as Jews in India, but rather because they wanted to. This was the homeland they had been singing about in their prayers for centuries. When Ruby came to Israel, she lived with her sister on Kibbutz Neot Mordechai. Although they remained a minority in this Ashkenazi secular kibbutz, Ruby maintained her religious practices and Indian customs with pride. At first, she wasn't quite understood or appreciated, for she was very different from what her neighbors were used to. But in 1995, when she published her book, Ruby of Cochin, with Barbara C. Johnson, the kibbutz honored her. She was even invited to speak at the Israel Museum at the opening of the Jews of India exhibit where she was also introduced to the Indian ambassador. You see, many noticed the significance in Ruby's documentation and storytelling, even if simply of ordinary people and acts. As should we, for they say that a story can shorten the distance between places. And with her written stories and work translating Malayalam Jewish songs, Ruby made the world of Cochin Jewry seem not so far away.